Hi guys, it's Brad Heath with Double D Trailers. Uh, hope you're having a great day. So today we're going to be doing uh, just a quick question and answer episode on uh, you know some popular questions that we receive frequently, and we thought it'd be nice to just cover those in a video or podcast so that we could share with others. Uh, Kristen from Boone, Iowa. What are the best practices for maintaining your trailer as you use it? In other words, practical advice for how we should be cleaning and maintaining our trailers. And then she asks some specific questions after every use. What needs to be cleaned? What can wait? How, how to clean it? Uh, periodic basis, things that need to be done annual. And then are there items on the outside of the trailer that the owner should be doing? Caulking, joints, washing, waxing, other. Uh, particularly on the last one. So I find that uh, door locks, window locks, keyholes, you know, those things tend to get dry over time, particularly even when a, when a trailer is new. So uh, what I like to do is just take a, a key and dip it right into a jar of Vaseline, put it in and out of the lock a few times and turn it. And so it really lubricates that lock. Same thing with uh, all hinges, interior and exterior, WD-40 or any sort of penetrating oil or lubricant goes a very long ways. And then of course, wash and wax. Anytime we can keep a coat of wax on the trailer, uh, it just helps protect it from the sunlight. To answer the other questions, I'm going to show you guys a, a resource. We have a plethora of information on the site. So if you just go back to the site, doubledtrailers.com, go to resources and articles. Okay. And then from here, of course, there's lots of topics, but we're going to go to maintenance and right there. So there's several articles for smart reasons to use nitrogen in your tires how to deep clean your trailer. So this would answer um, the specific question about cleaning, flooring, um, exterior, particular steps. So uh, we won't read through that, but just wanted to point out that the resource is there. How to get horse trailer service when you need repairs. So this article, we actually have a chart of what to do before each use every six months or 6,000 miles, every 12 months, and then uh, lots of explanation there, okay? And let's just look at the others, how to keep your trailer looking its best, so that'll talk about exterior, uh, spring cleaning, and um, a, a short section about maintenance on tires. So uh, great questions, Kristen, I, I really appreciate that. Amy from New Hampshire says, I was thinking about the chest bars on a slant load trailer, both front and rear facing. Do they have chest bars and do they need them? So I've never installed um, chest bars on a slant load. You know, on a straight load, the motion is braking and accelerating with the vehicle. So you're going to have, you know, backwards when you accelerate and then it's going to sort of throw you forward. Uh, when you're decelerating or braking. So the chest bar uh, really comes in handy in that situation and even the butt bar too. So it helps keep the, uh, the butt off of that back door. When we go at the slant load, you know, the majority of the accelerating and decelerating, uh, the horse has that long divider for support. So in those instances, chest bars are certainly not needed uh, regardless of the configuration forward or rear facing. Uh, SJ Brown from Facebook sends a message, is a gooseneck trailer safer than a bumper pull in a wreck? That's a great question. Um, there's another one down here about a Ford Explorer, so we're going to touch on both of those. But to answer that question quickly, uh, my response would be no. I have no problem whatsoever recommending a bumper pull trailer, provided it's being towed by an adequately equipped tow vehicle. Okay, and that's the key. Uh, it's not so much about a gooseneck is safer than a bumper pull. The problem that we see today is a, a lot of folks are towing with vehicles that are underrated. Um, they, they, they're not aware of it. They go off of what the dealer says at the trailer lot of what a tongue weight is. And often that information is uh, not accurate because some folks will say whatever to make a sale, unfortunately. And same thing with the vehicle dealerships. You have sales folks that all they do is they just know how to read the specs 
and oftentimes uh, they're looking at the wrong numbers. So uh, we'll talk more about bumper pull and accidents and things like that. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and, and jump down to uh, the Ford Explorer question. Sarah says, I have a Ford Explorer. Can I trailer horses? Um, more than likely not. It will depend on several factors, the year of the vehicle, the size of the trailer, uh, what the tongue weight comes in at, what size horses you have will determine you know, the width and the height and the length of the trailer. And all of those are variables that we certainly help with. But a Ford Explorer, uh, it's a short wheelbase SUV. And um, I'll give you an example. I've just been working with a client. They have a trailer on order. Uh, two horse bumper pull, safe tack reverse, and they're hauling warm blood. So the trailer weighs about 5,100 pounds and the tongue weight is 1,100. And they were looking at a 2022 Yukon Denali. Okay. Uh, Yukon Denali is rated to tow 8,500 pounds. So you think, well, if the trailer weighs five and horses weigh two each, that's seven. I can tow 85. So I have plenty of capacity, no problem. The challenge is the tongue weight rating on that vehicle is only um, 850 pounds. And so we're trying to tow a trailer with a tongue weight of 1,100 pounds with a vehicle that's only rated at 850. And of course, you see vehicles uh, all day, small SUVs towing horse trailers. But what the manufacturers don't tell you, it's in the really fine print and the same at dealerships. They're all going to brag to you about, yeah, it'll pull 8,500 pounds or it'll pull 10,000 pounds. What they don't tell you is what it'll actually carry. So there's a difference between pulling and carrying something, okay? Um, if you're moving the, your dresser around in your bedroom, it's pretty heavy. You can probably slide it, which would be pulling or pushing. But to pick one end up and try to drag the thing around uh, is an entirely different story. So um, that's the challenge with vehicles these days. And unfortunately, over the years, manufacturers of vehicles continue to up the tow ratings of what they'll pull, the big number that everybody looks at and what they advertise. But the smaller number, which is the uh, actual payload capacity, the tongue weight rating um, on the hitches, those have continued to decline. And I'll give you an example. Uh, my last vehicle was a 2005 GMC Sierra half ton, and it had a tongue weight rating on the hitch of 1,500 pounds with weight distribution, so 1,500 pounds. And it'll pull most any two horse or three horse bumper pull without issue. Uh, a 2022 GMC truck only has a tongue weight rating of 1,100 pounds, and they do offer a hitch where you can haul up to 1,300. So you have to special order with the specific configuration, the correct engine, the correct you know gear ratio, and those type things. Um, so anyway, lots of information about towing. If you go to uh, the resource page again, we have, let me just find that, finding the right tow vehicle. Um, let's click on that. Lots of information that we put together. Is your tow vehicle, um, trailer to tow vehicle waste rate, weight ratio safe for the road? Smallest tow vehicles, can I tow with a car? A step-by-step -step guide, eight things to check on your tow vehicle. We've got tips, where to position a gooseneck, and then even an article on finding the best truck for towing. So uh, the biggest challenge that we face, again, these days are clients trying to tow two-horse bumper pulls, three-horse bumper pulls with newer uh, SUVs, and they simply just are not rated uh, to handle that tongue weight. And one more note on tongue weight, um, you know, some of the RV folks would tell you, well, hey, tongue weight should be about 10% of the total weight of the trailer. Uh, so if you're towing a camper or a boat and it weighs 5,000 pounds, it's probably going to have around a five or 600 pound tongue weight. However, when towing a live load, aka horses, uh, the dynamics are significantly different. And the reason for that, so tongue weight on horse trailers is going to be uh, around 20% versus 10 or 15%. And the reason for that is we have to make it 
um, I don't want to say idiot proof, but idiot proof if you will. And what I mean by that is if you're towing two horses, uh, a two horse trailer, and perhaps only one horse in the front stall, and the you know, divider pops open, or even let's say you remove that divider and you just want to haul one horse in a box stall configuration. We have to have the weight of the horse centered over the axles so that whether the horse is in the front stall or the back stall, it makes absolutely no difference. Some manufacturers will tell you, hey, we can just move the axles farther forward and that'll lighten the tongue weight. Well, sure, absolutely that would work. It's the same thing they do on boats and RVs. However, if the horse steps in the back stall and the axles are too far forward, you're going to have negative tongue weight and unfortunately it's an accident waiting to happen and it's going to throw you in the ditch. So uh, to answer the, uh, the question of the gooseneck safer than the bumper pull, um, as long as the tow vehicle is adequately rated, you will be in good shape. And if you're towing with the vehicle that is not rated for it, we won't say that it won't do it. The challenge is, is once you get in that high stress situation, uh, you have to brake suddenly, you have to swerve to miss something. That's when the risk is so much greater of losing uh, control of the vehicle. Okay. Um, Jesus uh, sent a message on Instagram and says, how can I get a lazy horse to load in a trailer? Um, yeah, maybe uh, maybe entice the guy with some feed there. I'm not sure on that. We do work with a number of clients with difficult loaders, uh, and we receive testimonial after testimonial. If you go back to the resources tab and uh, the customer story, so these are actual interviews that we've started doing with clients once they've made a purchase, and you can read through those. We're not going to do it on this session, but you'll find uh, lots of info regarding difficult to load horses and now using the safe tack reverse and praise of how well the horse trailers, how well the horse loads, things like that. All right. And then uh, last question from Ryan B. He says, I always wonder why anyone wants their hay on top of the trailer. Seems stupid uh, to get a flake, have to climb up there and return down a ladder with hay. I don't disagree with you at all, Ryan. Um, I don't think it's stupid, but there's only so many places that you know hay is available to be stored. And if you're towing with the bumper pull uh, and an SUV, you can't put it inside the SUV. So maybe in the back of the truck with uh, a pickup would be a better solution. And then he has another question. It says, why are travel trailers tall, but not horse trailers? Why can't you at least build the living quarters like a nice fifth wheel? So with the travel trailer, if you look at the floor, the height of the floor, they're actually sitting. Let's just look one up here. And I can show you better than I can explain it. Uh, let's go to photos of an RV, images, and mm -hmm, there's a nice image. We'll just use that one. And so if you look at the height of this trailer, they're on top of the tires, okay? So the, the floor of the trailer doesn't even start until much higher off the ground. So the center of gravity on an RV, it's very tall, it's top heavy. You're gonna get a lot of movement back, you know, side to side. If you were riding in the back of the, uh, of the RV, which is illegal by the way, but if you were to do that, you would, you would feel a bit of rocking and motion and things like that that's not conducive for hauling a horse. And most of these RVs, I think, only have a ceiling height of about seven feet or uh, maybe just a little more depending on the class and style. If you look at a, um, a horse trailer though, let's just jump back and go to a quick photo. Um, let's see, let me find one that shows what I'm looking for. Oh, there was a good one. Yeah, that works. If you look at the horse trailer, it's much lower. So rather than the floor of the trailer being up here, which is where the RV is, uh, a horse trailer is, is way down here. And the a couple purposes, one, so the horse can step up inside the trailer. Uh, two, you want that center of gravity as low as possible. And that's going to reduce that rocking side to side, and it's just going to make the ride for your horse more comfortable. 
And then also, most of our interior heights are seven foot four, seven foot six, seven foot eight inches. Um, I think the reason that they're not quite as tall as the RV is because we actually start probably 18 or 20 inches lower to the ground than what the RVs do. So uh, seven foot ceiling in a horse trailer might be here, seven foot ceiling in an RV may be up there. Okay. Not to say that you couldn't make a horse trailer. I think legal height, uh, it's either 13 or 13 foot 6 inches from the ground to the very tip top of the trailer. Uh, most horse trailers with living quarters are probably going to have a height of around 11 or 11 and a half. So there's a couple feet more that could be, um, you know, extended in the ceiling height there. The challenge is on a horse trailer, you would not, you know, you'd be 9 or 10 feet tall. And in the horse area, you couldn't reach the windows or the vents, or uh, it would just be quite challenging to do that. Okay. All right. That is all for today. Um, feel free to message us additional questions. We'd love to answer those for you. And, of course, check out our website at doubledtrailers.com. Thanks so much. Have a great day.